This dream of a trip continues onward in Helsinki. On the very first day, we walked to Lamasari, a nature reserve which famously hosts an abundant variety of species. Soon after entering, you can find yourself walking on small wooden bridges between head-high reeds. And occasionally, you can catch a breath on a raised platform to look out over them. All the while, the other parts of the reserve are in forested areas where the sun peeks through the foliage. One can also stumble across meadows with grazing cows. And the marshlands are a temporary home to migrating birds who take a pause here to rest and get some food. We tested the chilly water for ourselves, but thought it better to walk back rather than swim. And as the sun set, we left Lamasari and ended our first day and prepared for the next one. Starting bright and early, we took a morning call from a park bench before entering into the mothership of work, a co-working hub. Here we enjoyed unlimited popcorn and a great conversation with the community manager about the future of work. Afterwards, we were smack dab in the middle of the city and we explored up and down the streets. Spontaneously, we boarded a ship after successfully haggling for a box of strawberries. I guess we felt the world was at our fingertips and in some way, it kind of was. We were headed to Sumilina, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and also an 18th century sea fortress. Sometimes we had to pause to take it all in, and other times we flew from point to point. We explored the caves, and we eventually exited them, coming out not so much with some newfound knowledge, but more so to catch the sunset in time. We hopped across some rocks to get to the water's edge, and we were given beautiful golden visions of the rippling waves amongst a silhouetted skyline. The next day, we spent seeing some of the creativity that can be found in Helsinki, from Amos Rex to the steps of the Grand Cathedral. We opened our laptops and worked from the steps until a large swarm of people headed our way and we were told that we simply couldn't be there anymore. So we quickly ran down the steps and positioned ourselves on a nearby statue to see what this was all about. It was the perfect backdrop as a beautiful choir sang in the background. The event didn't end there as the smaller choir groups dispersed and sang around the city. back at night, taking in yet another side of Helsinki. The next day we met up with Jakko and Aino, two Finnish friends of mine, to explore the small island of Linlo. The pre-sunset lighting gave everything a beautiful glow as we walked toward the middle of the island to seek out a camping spot. Once we set up our camp, we started to make a fire using different techniques to try to challenge ourselves that we could light a fire with only a single match. But it's too small, I can't hit it. You can do it. If you're filming. I trust you. Boom. The funny part was, although it worked, we didn't really have anything to grill, other than some bananas. This, however, turned out to be something extra special, as with only the addition of a few pieces of chocolate, they became a delicacy that I will certainly repeat over and over again. The night came soon, and with it, violet clouds overhead. Though they eventually let up and let us gaze towards the wide open heavens. The morning was relatively clear, and we explored up and down the small island. We rested on some rocks on the water's edge, 
and enjoyed the sun on our skin. Soon we would leave and say goodbye to our dear friends. The rest of the weekend was filled with walking through the botanical gardens and finding our way to the refuge of silence, a large wooden shaped egg that blocked out any trace of sound from the outside world. As cool as that was, the Church of the Rock also had a bit of its own charm, built in symbiosis with the rock around it. Its large copper dome, uniform cement pillars, and brass organ gave it a truly unique atmosphere. We had almost made it home, but a downpour had other ideas in mind, forcing us to take shelter under a nearby gas station. The next day was calmer, and I spent the day just walking around aimlessly, taking looks at the various forms and views of the different architecture, buildings, and art of the city. This random wandering led me to the western waterfront, where I watched yet another firelit sky turn into night. We then headed to the epicenter Helsinki to work for the day, an innovation hub at its finest. The work areas are functional, comfortable, versatile, and ample. But the biggest advantage of the epicenter is the people, the networking and the shared passion for innovation and for the future. We sat down with Christian, the country manager, and discussed this and much more. We then hopped into the time machine and found our way back to the central cathedral. But time was ticking and the sun, well, it was setting. So we ran off to explore more sites before dark. We also had the chance to meet up with Yusi, a representative of the Helsinki Smart City. We rode our bikes together to the Helsinki Central Library, which in all honesty deserves a video of its own. This library is not only beautiful on the outside, but also on the inside, and for more than one reason. There are free to use laser cutters, engraving machines, 3D printers, PlayStation 5 systems, VR sets, a fully functional kitchen, almost every instrument you can think of including things like a Fender Stratocaster or Martin Acoustic, but also hi-fi recording rooms with hundreds of thousands of euros of equipment. There are screen prints, large format printers and cutters, sewing machine after sewing machine, and of course, normal computers. But wait until you get upstairs. That is where all the books are. The architecture here immediately invites you in and screams beauty. There are literal trees in the library, and the bookshelves are lit beautifully with LEDs. There are dedicated areas for children, some designed to cultivate the imagination, like this small city. There are also areas dedicated for bigger children too, like this amazing game collection. Even the rugs are thematic. I mean, just look at this place. We even have chairs built in at weird angles on the slope. And the windows? Well, they're made with millions of polka dots to filter in the light just right. This place is a marvel, and there are art pieces just hanging out. And did I mention the trees? Everywhere you look is a photograph. And if inside wasn't enough, they also have a wooden terrace to overlook the city. Oh, and they have robots to transport the books. The spiral staircase in the center is dedicated to different groups of people, and it is a wonder in itself. If you follow it downstairs, you'll get to a place where you can rent out just about everything, from sport equipment to games to stone drills. On top of that, the seats are so beautiful that you simply want to come inside and read. It's a place where you can rest the soul, but it's also a place where your soul is lit on fire. Often I've been talking about the future of work. Well, this is the future of libraries. But the library wasn't the only future-oriented thing we saw. UC also showed us Yaktasadi, 
a newer area of Helsinki that is implementing innovative AI applications like LiDAR-based traffic sensing to help better facilitate the traffic that's emerging from the many large ferries which dock in its ports, or autonomously driven street cleaners. On top of this, the algorithms that they're running for these innovations are open source. Pretty amazing. They also utilize a form of democratic budgeting in which the people who live in the areas are allotted a certain amount of money each year, which they then allocate to different nonprofits operating projects within their region. This sounds like a great model for getting people involved with their communities. Later on, we headed to the local market for some fresh food, which we ate while watching another sunset. Can't get enough of those, apparently. And if we saw the architecture, the culture, and the arts, we also needed to see the sports. So we headed to our first ever ice hockey game. Did you know that Finland is currently the best in the world at the sport? Our Helsinki team pulled off a comeback and everyone was happy in the end. Soon enough, it was the last day of the adventure. But we thought, why not have an adventure within an adventure? So we took a ferry boat over to Estonia for the day. We arrived in Tallinn two hours later and began exploring the streets. It's interesting, the city is so close to Helsinki, but it has such a different feeling, with such different architecture. We soon arrived in front of the Russian embassy, where multitudes of people express their thoughts on the current situation. The town square was nice, and we ended up exploring the castle and some other sites thanks to our personal tour guide and my friend, Oli. He showed us the ropes, the city lines, and the famous sites, the cathedrals, and then eventually he dropped us off at the local market. Here, you could find fresh fruit and vegetables, and really anything else you wanted. But we were after more of the city itself, and to get that, we had to walk. We explored a Berlin-esque area of Tallinn, complete with old buildings, beautiful graffiti art like this, or like this, overly stickered doors, large metal rodent sculptures, outdoor photography exhibitions, strewn about ping pong tables, more graffitied walls, and even some spinning things. Oh, and they have robots too. Well, what these ones do, I have no idea. We eventually made our way back to the city, saw new art being made in a new style, and also some new almonds being made in an old style. The path led us through houses and through the old city walls, through community gardens and back into the center. We ate a meal in a medieval style, under candles and out of clay bowls, and then we headed home. The next day we boarded the final ferry and headed back to Germany. We received a final farewell from a setting sun, but we all know the best is yet to come. <laughs>